on this beautiful day that God has given us. It's a little cloudy here in Southern California and a little chilly, but it feels awesome. I I'm so glad that you're here to join us, whether it's live on Facebook or whether you watch us later on on YouTube. Just to remind you that you can get a downloadable copy of our order for worship. It's found in your Saturday afternoon e-blast entitled What's Happening This Week at CLC or on our web website www.christlutheranlb.com. If you look at the top, you'll see a tab that says Opportunities to Serve. If you click on that and then scroll down on the right hand side, you will see the order for worship there in recent posts, as, as well as in their Friday, uh, Saturday e-blast and um, on our website, you will see two other opportunities for you for this week. One is a kids worship folder entitled Kids Stuff, and also a devotion for the week based on the lessons for today entitled God's Story, Our Story. Rich Elschlager has given us a beautiful bouquet again this morning from the flowers on our property. Thank you, Rich. And we will continue to have drive-through communion this morning at 10.30 for one hour. Also, today is the, the day, the third Sunday of the month, that we would like you to have an opportunity to take communion in your home. So please prepare something that resembles wine for you and something that resembles bread for you. And when we uh, come to that part called Words of Institution, in our order for worship, you are ready to lift those elements. Church and Society continues, uh, our outreach for this month continues to be COA, which is Christian Outreach in Action, as we support the fifth Wednesday meal that we normally uh, serve. So please earmark your donations for this month for COA, and thank you so much for your generosity last month for Fei Esperanza. We will continue our Bible study on the fourth Tuesday of the month with the book entitled uncomfortable conversations with a black man it will be tuesday march 23rd at 7 15 um, and if you'll email me i'll send you the zoom link for that lent is here i'm sure you can tell um, we will be again offering a midweek worship at 2 30 on wednesday via our facebook live stream as well as downloaded or uploaded onto youtube um, shortly later that afternoon we are focusing on some of the women who are important to our faith, who have, were around or part of the history of Jesus. Sunday Ed continues this morning at 12.30 p.m. The link is in the Saturday e-blast. Um, we are going to talk about the whole events of Holy Week with a study by Amy Jill Levine entitled Entering the Passion of Jesus. If you would like the book, please feel free to order it on Amazon or through your local bookstore, though it's not necessary to be part of that. I also want to um, acknowledge that today marks one year since we went online for worship. I also want to acknowledge the grief and the anxiety and the separation we all feel when we are not able to gather together as a community of faith. But I also want to celebrate the ability we have had to adopt and adapt so quickly. We went from Friday the 13th to Sunday the 15th of March last year with no interruptions. So that, I am so grateful that we were able to adapt that quickly. It wasn't perfect, it was far from it, but we did it. And we've been continuing to improve since then. And we all look forward with great anticipation to the gathering that we can have again soon but not yet so i invite you to please acknowledge your own grief and anxiety and to be patient as we continue to figure out what it looks like for us at christ lutheran to gather together again we are working on it diligently i promise so thank you again for being with us and for worshiping with us Every yes Yes, uh, Brian has an announcement. Yes, for some strange reason, we never had this happen since we started doing live streaming, but I'm getting major dropouts today, meaning yeah. that our internet problem is um, something's the matter with our internet this morning. So this oh, is great. recording. This is recording. If for some reason it drops out too much where you miss too much of the service, you can always catch the service again on YouTube later on when yes. we upload it. Okay. 
I am so sorry that we're experiencing internet problems today. That is so rare for us. Um, we will try to do our best to figure out what it is, and if we need to have something rebooted this week, we sure will. Um, in the meantime, I invite you, if you can, to join us for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us with your everlasting love and forgive us all our offenses. Cleanse us from proud thoughts and remove empty desires. Draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God whose love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In, mercy, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus died for us, and while we were still sinners and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Amen. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is Change My Heart, O God. love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. Merciful God, you care deeply for those who are in need. May we be your hands and heart as we go about your work of serving the poor, hungry, and disadvantaged, feeding our souls on kindness and love. Amen. Enjoy this special music this morning, performed for us by Roger.
morning. The reading is Psalm 41. Blessed is he who has regard for the weak. The Lord delivers him in times of trouble. The Lord will protect him and preserve his life. He will bless him in the land and not surrender him to the desires of his foes. The Lord will sustain him on his sickbed and restore him from his bed of illness. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, when will he die and his name perish? Whenever one comes to see me, he speaks falsely, while his heart gathers slander, then he goes out and spreads it abroad. All my enemies whisper together against me. They imagine the worst for me, saying, A vile disease has beset him, and he will never get up from the place where he lies. Even my close friend, whom I trusted, he who shared my bread, has lifted his heel against me. But you, O Lord, have mercy on me. Raise me up, that I may repay them. I know that you are pleased with me, for my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you uphold me and set me in your presence forever. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for this day comes from Luke, the 19th chapter. Oh, make that the 16th chapter, starting with the 19th verse. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, Remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides this, between us, uh, you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He then said, then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, Neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, O Christ. Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God who is creator, Christ, and comforter. Amen. With today's beautifully told story by Jesus, I really want to put on my best impersonation of Dana Carvey's impersonation of the church lady. <laughs> well, isn't that special? Because I don't know about you, but I come to this story with a bunch of questions. What's this story supposed to be about? Are we supposed to figure that out for ourselves? Is this story about heaven and hell? Is this story about 
economics. Amy Jill Levine, in her book, Short Stories by Jesus, says, what if the parable does say something about the afterlife, which is what the church fathers and mothers thought, and probably what the majority of the original auditors of the Bible thought, who believed in a just God, who resurrected the dead and proclaimed a final judgment. Hmm. What if we took seriously Jesus' own concern for how people related to each other or how they might live if, that already, if they already had one foot in the kingdom of heaven? What if the parable does say something about economic status, a major concern for both the scriptures of Israel and of Jesus of Nazareth? Well, that's how people in Jesus' audience would have heard it. And I think we would do well to hear it as they did. Whenever we hear words in a parable, there was a rich man who, we know that that person is not going to be a role model. And this rich man who is nameless, something worth noting, is not just rich, he is really rich. Now, let me take a moment to digress. Wealth is a hard thing for us to have a really good concept of, especially those of us who live here in Hollywood land. That said, I want to take a moment for us to go up high and get a more global perspective. If you have a car to drive and a roof over your head, you are in the top 1% of wealthy people globally. 99% of the world does not have one or both of these things. So let's just take a moment and count our blessings. So back to our story. Jesus gives us some real clues of how rich this man was. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. That is a loaded sentence. Purple dye is very expensive in Jesus' day and here is why. To make purple dye, it means that you had to harvest thousands of marine snails and then you put them in a lead vat and you boil them for days. Now you can just imagine how wonderful that smells. So that you can get a tiny bit of purple dye. Got it? So this is why purple cloth was only for the fabulously rich. But purple dye was equated to the price of gold. So this man's clothes were dyed purple. And not only dyed purple, but it was fine linen that was being dyed. Now that meant, for those who were in listening to Jesus, that's the clothing of kings and priests. And the priests would only wear purple fine linen garments when they served in the sanctuary. Got it? Okay, so they were that precious, these garments, and they were that expensive. They were that well cared for. And what does this rich man do? He wears them every day, and not only that, he eats in them. And what does he eat? Oh, well, it's not just simple fare he puts in his mouth. It's sumptuous food. And with the use of the Greek word that's there, it's not just food that he eats. It's a whole lot of partying going on while he dines. It's downright obscene what he's doing. Which, of course, then 
is in direct contrast to what the Torah teaches in Deuteronomy 5, 15, 11. Since there will never cease to be someone in need on the earth, I therefore command you, open your hand to the poor and the needy in your land. Okay, do you see how masterfully Jesus sets up this story? So the people listening to him understand what's happening in this tale. And now we do too. Jesus had reminded his followers and his would-be followers that storing up wealth and not sharing one's possession can keep us from heaven. Which perfectly reflects the Jewish first century understanding of life and death and in their cultural context. Now, the main point of this story is this rich man refuses to give alms, and it's obscene. This poor man, who, oh my goodness, has a name, Lazarus, is right there. And just so you know, Lazarus means God helps. Now some people, probably some people who really cared about Lazarus, gently put him in proximity to the rich man so he would be able to easily live out Deuteronomy 15.11. Do you also catch that this rich man knew Lazarus by name? So he's not just some poor guy sitting close to my house. He's someone I know. Could this possibly parallel another Lazarus whom Jesus raised from the dead? Lazarus didn't want to be invited to dine obscenely with this rich man. He just wanted table scraps, so we think. It's funny, isn't it? Lazarus never speaks in this parable. We do know that Lazarus doesn't get a crumb. And quite frankly, the dogs come and lick his sores, which turns his body into food for them. Hmm. But while Lazarus gave what he did not get, they also, those dogs, gave Lazarus something in return because dog saliva has healing properties. And that was something that even the ancients knew. And that is just in, uh, and just as in our day, these dogs provide Lazarus comfort when no human being does. Lazarus dies. The rich man dies. Lazarus is protected and nurtured by Abraham, the only other person with the name in this story. And Lazarus is receiving the hospitality and care that Abraham is so well known for throughout all of history up to this audience that's listening. And the good news is Lazarus is safe and at last. And the rich man, however, he is in torment and he still doesn't get it. He still wants Lazarus to do his bidding. Make him come to me. Make him give me something to drink. Make him tell my brothers about their faith. To the rich man, Lazarus is still a slave whose job it is to serve the master. Still the laborer who will do whatever is necessary to survive. Even though both men are dead, the rich man still sees Lazarus as an available servant to take care of his needs. He has not repented from his failure to aid Lazarus. He has not repented and recognized his sin, nor does he find the Torah commands compelling 
which worries him about his family. Some people never change. No matter how aware they are that their lifestyle leaves others in poverty. This parable speaks clearly to the danger of wealth. Remember, we are the one percent. This parable asks us today to examine our priorities. The whole point of this parable is that we need to act like human beings, caring for the poor human beings and realizing that we are indeed the sisters and the brothers keepers. We get to overhear Jesus tell those who are listening to this story that they are commanded by the Bible to love their neighbor as themselves and to love the stranger in their midst. And I wonder this morning, those listening, did they get it? Do we? We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. If we do not show love, we cannot know the abundance life which you desire for us. Teach our hearts, touch our hearts with mercy, that we might also be merciful. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. So much of the world suffers for lack of basic needs. Lead us to demand more equitable systems of resources, their use and distribution, that none may be in need. Compassionate God, 
hear our prayer. Polar ice is melting faster than we can mend this broken planet, O oh Lord. Give us wisdom to deal with the challenges that we all face and to find new ways of living and thriving along with your creation. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. Be with those who suffer from diseases related to malnutrition, as well as those with among us suffering from varying eating disorders. Feed us on your grace and bring us into wholeness with our bodies and our souls. Send your healing spirit to Justin, Judy, Ione, and Carol, Adam, Daniel, Phil, Barry, and Janice, Gary and Linda, Marilyn, Terry, Gladie, Jerry, Marilyn, Sandy, Ralph, John, Clara and John, Ethan, Charlie and David, Mary, John, Kevin, Gable, Tamara, Brecken, Jeff, Alberti, Alberta, Cindy, Evie, Bobby, Ben, Teria, Kylie and Crystal, Jean, Victoria, Doris, Mary, Barb, Katrina, Judy, Rudy, Miguel, Pam, Ian, Mark, Degas, Matthew, Woody, Christina and Scott, Debbie, Jolene, Anna, Clint and Jolene, Steve and Jenny, as well as those that we name aloud before you or remember in the silence of our hearts. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. Bless those that teach and those that are learning at Christ Lutheran Preschool, our Lutheran universities and seminaries, and all schools of our church. Sustain those that marvel not only at the mystery of creation and redemption, but also in the skills and gracious teaching that illuminates the, that mystery with awe and a sense of caring and protection for this marvelous gift of education. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. War and division mark our days and cloud what drives all lives. Protect those serving as first responders in the Peace and Diplomatic Corps and in our nation's military, especially Jason, Samuel, Rachel and Victor, Ethan, Michael, Aaron, William, Damian, Gabriel, Richard, Chandler, John, Brittany, Davis, Morgan, Haley, Johnny, Brina, Sean, Emily, Stephen Andrew, Michael Joseph, Jim, Sophie, Douglas, Dominic, Jonah, and Colin. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. Comfort those whose hearts are broken at the loss of those they love. Assure us that you hold all the departed in your eternal love and that we will see them again when our time on earth is done. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. You hear all your children's prayers and gather the lost into your loving arms. Teach us to put our trust in you and in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we remember Jesus until he comes again. Let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You are what God made you to be. 
created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and living family, of the Trinity of God. Amen. Amen. While we partake in this, or have this last hymn, I invite you, if you are at home, to partake in communion as we sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.